Yeah, thank you, thank you. So uh, maybe before we start, I got, does anyone using Argo CD in production has up? Okay, about 70%. That's kind of like the CNCF survey, always case. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Hong Wan. So I'm the CEO from the QD. And this is Jesse Sun, so CTO from the QD. So we are both the original creator of the Argo project. So in a way, we have been stuck in this project for 80 years. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a good journey, but I'm happy with that. So today, we are happy to share our journey here. And uh, feel free to ask us a lot of questions in the very end. So to be honest, like, uh, there's a lot of controversial going on about how you do an open source startup. I think we are trying to be the less controversial part because we have our clear thinking about how we get it done. Uh, well, it's not being validated because we are not a multi-billion business yet. However, we still want to share our journey. Hopefully you guys can, like, asking us anything, uh, we, can, we can bounce in some ideas there. Um, so I need to do a little bit proper introduction about company because uh, we are at the startup fast, as you guys know what we are doing here. So we define ourselves to be the enterprise company for Argo and also Cargo. That's another open source product we created recently and made the GA. So we are providing the end-to-end -end GitOps platform for Kubernetes. So we, the original Argo team, funded the Acuity in 2021 and raised the $25 million from Decibel Partners and LeadEdge. So I believe most of the people know the Argo story is strongly associated with Intuit. So however, the Argo project was started before that. So we created the Argo project at this company called Applatix. So it's a startup started around 2016 to building the Kubernetes-based DevOps platform. So Argo project was open source and rewrote based on the customer resource definition in 2017. And soon we got acquired. So we joined Intuit. So we joined Intuit as the Intuit platform team to driving the Kubernetes adoption on AWS. So definitely that was a fantastic journey and it enabled us, our team, to learn about uh, the large enterprise. Like what do they care? Like what really can make the large enterprise features feasible? So in the end, we were able to manage a fleet of about 300 cluster, 20,000 namespaces, namespaces, and providing a self-served developer platform for 4,000 developers. So in 2021, we decided to create Acuity as the Argo enterprise company to help more other companies adopt the Argo project. That's a little bit of history there. So I want to set a little bit more business context here is sure, we are Argo, Argo, but we want to grow out of that. That's why we see here is about providing three things here. So Argo, everyone knew about it, is more focused on the deployment. And the Cargo is our new open source project, is doing the continuous promotion. Thinking about the Cargo is on top of the Argo. Argo is focused on the single environment, the single namespace, and the Cargo is focused on how you're promoting the Argo from one environment to another. So that's what we are doing. The second, third thing is called Kubevision. I don't put names there, but it's called Kubevision. So it's actually interesting in a way is it's actually based on the Argo CD data we already have access and already connected. So we are providing uh, several different ways of the dashboarding to providing the deep visibility into your Kubernetes infrastructure. So the whole idea is uh, you have the visibility. It's enable you to do more efficient troubleshooting. So it helps you to reduce the MTDD and MTTR. As you can see, our business model is building upon the open source project we created. And open source is definitely our foundation. So I want showing this picture. So it's, little bit, uh, it's with a little bit of history. This is the Argo project 1.0. So the very initial Argo workflow 1.0. So um, a little bit of uh, confess here is uh, it was a great product with a lot of functionality, but it didn't sell. It's very heavy. So it's, uh, it's require a Cassandra database to run. It requires a Kubernetes cluster. And basically, to run in this Argo, you need to bring up about the 10 microservices so they're working together. So it requires a lot of resource maintenance. 
And that was when we just started our open source journey. We open source something we thought the community will love. So to be honest, it didn't work out. At least it's getting some traction at the beginning. But the CRD really changed everything immediately. So Jesse and Alex quickly rewrote the whole logic based on the CRD. So we don't even need to maintain a database anymore. So we also cut back a lot of functionality to focus on just one thing, the workflow orchestration. So Argo workflow currently is the most popular Kubernetes native workflow engine. So a lot of the other data pipeline solutions are building upon that. So, so what we learn from here is uh, to make an open source project very successful, you must hit one and only main use pain, user pain and use case very hard. And so it will be very easy to understand. More importantly, it's very easy to give it a try to let people feel comfortable with it. So you cannot get a very sophisticated product to solving like 10 different problems. People feel, oh, it's too heavy. Why are you using open source and how I, st how I get started? So what we are seeing here is after we figure out that three secret uh, source, how you make it open source successful, that's why we created a full project under Argo. It's not just one. We can do one, but uh, it didn't work out that way. So we, want, we created a workflow, very first one, Argo CD. Everyone knew about it. I'm not going to go too deeper. Argo events is a little bit special. We got a donation from the BlackRock. So they gave us the original version. We rewrote it again to be the event-driven dependency manager. Then later, we added Argo routes. So nowadays, when I, I'm here, especially I'm here, like I'm asking, like people say, hey, I love Argo. So thank you for the contribution. I say, OK, which Argo? <laughs> then you are getting the different answers. Sometimes it's Argo CD, sometimes Argo workflow, and also Argo routes. Like everyone is asking a different thing. Then I'm asking back is, OK, what are you using? Common one is Argo CD. Uncommon one is Argo CD with Argo events. But people kind of like pick and choose the component they want to use to, to solving their own problem. I think that is where we found out is the, the right way to do the open source, is open source something can really be sticky to the people's mind and solving some unique problem. So I will hand over to Jesse talking about how we are doing the business here without a basic context here. Thanks, so. Hal. Yeah, so I guess the big question is how can a company make money from open source? That's the million dollar question, or I guess since there are startups here, it's the billion dollar question, right? Um, so I'll go over some of the approaches that we're taking around building a business around um, specifically Argo CD. Um, when we created Argo CD, we were already had been acquired by Intuit, and we had no plans to monetize it. Um, we were, uh, our team was tasked to build a deployment solution that fit into its needs. And Intuit just happens to be a large enterprise in the fintech space with high security standards, a large developer base that um, was brand new to Kubernetes. Uh, and so we added all the features to Argo CD that, uh, that we needed for ourselves, seeing things like a, a user interface for helping end users uh, understand and troubleshoot um, Kubernetes, and we did that for selfish reasons. We were a small platform team, and we just like couldn't support 4,000 developers unless they could help themselves. Um, you know, we added single sign-on because you know it's an enterprise requirement. Um, we were running hundreds of clusters, so the solution had to be multi-cluster, as it had to be multi-tenant. So all of these things we just kept throwing in into the product because it was needed for um, our own purposes. Uh, but when we eventually left into it to start Acuity, we quickly found out that the biggest competitor that we faced was ourselves. Uh, because you know, after all this time, the set of features in the open source version of Argo um, was basically too good. It's easy to run, it has a great UI, it comes out of the box with all, all the, most of the features that uh, enterprises uh, needs. Um, so when we left, left into it, the first step we took to creating a business around Argo was to become the vendor for the product project. Uh, the project had already become extremely popular, uh, but there wasn't a proper vendor to support it. Uh, and being the creators of the project and just 
um, over time observing people uh, having the need to get help with it, we, we knew that we could at least be that vendor. So we started out just by offering support and expertise. Um, they're nothing special, it's just like support. Um, but we knew eventually we wanted to run Argo CD as a managed service. So we, as we provided that support, we worked on providing our own uh, distribution of Argo that we could um, manage for users and solve the challenges that we ourselves faced when operating Argo CD at Intuit. For example, um, it took us a, a small team just to run and operate Argo CD, um, and that managed offering could help ease that management burden. Um, we knew that there would be scalability and performance issues at a certain point once you reach a certain scale. Um, we, could, we knew we could improve on some of the security aspects um, and just overall reduce the cost of running Argo CD. Um, so using our deep knowledge and of the project, we, we were able to create a, um, a different architecture in our um, project, an agent-based architecture that solved a lot of these challenges. Um, and we did this um, uh, without changing the core experience of Argo. Um, so with our product, you get the same UI, the same API as you, as you get with the open source, um, but without any of its pain points. Um, but that said, um, fixing large scale scaling problems um, didn't resonate with a lot of uh, companies that we talked to because um, not all businesses are large enterprises and they might ever, never uh, hit those pain points. So we knew, knew, knew we had to do more. Our second approach uh, t was to dif start differentiating um, ourselves from the open source. Um, and one of the things you may or may not notice, uh, know about Argo CD is that it actually has a, um, an extension mechanism. Uh, you can, you're able to add new UI elements to the, directly in the Argo CD interface. You can add um, support for additional configuration management plugins. Um, and originally when we built this extensibility into Argo, it was, it was actually more of a defensive mechanism. Like we were, um, in the project, we're just flooded with requests for features that would be maybe too opinionated, that just didn't make sense or and belong in, uh, in Argo CD. So to defend against that, we said, let's just make an extension point, that build that framework so that anyone, um, community members, uh, end users, or even vendors like ourselves, could customize Argo CD um, without having it to be in prop, uh, Argo CD proper. And I think um, this approach became a win-win. Like it helped keep the uh, open source project a lot leaner and freer from bloat. Um, we as a vendor never felt like the need to fork the project uh, to, to add our own um, flavor to it. Um, and, and because of these extension points, we were ultimately able to add um, additional value directly into the Argo CD experience. Um, things like an AI chatbot um, that could help troubleshoot uh, applications. Um, we have, uh, with our product, we have a persistence layer. So now you can uh, store long-term audit records and Dora metrics. And as I mentioned, the new visualizations in their um, UI, like a timeline view that can make troubleshooting even easier. Uh, and then finally, the third approach that we're taking um, around build, building a business around Argo is to um, work on the tangential set of problems that we know people will face after adopting Argo CD. Um, so as creators of the project, we do understand its limitations and shortcomings. Um, and I'm not necessarily talking about feature gaps, um, but because the type of problems that we're trying to address next are, are actually beyond the scope of Argo CD. Um, for example, Argo CD has no um, pipelining capability or promotion process for um, taking something through from development to staging to production. Um, and then even though Argo CD has a great UI for understanding a single application, um, it's not so much useful when trying to understand your resources across clusters um, that might not be included as part of an application. And so we knew these would be eventual pain points uh, for users because we personally struggled with it ourselves at Intuit. Um, for example, we, we tried to hack our way using Jenkins to 
uh, drive promotion, which made for a very clunky and poor user experience. Um, so this, this third phase of our business is all about um, creating these new pro projects and tools that will complement our Argo CD. Um, Cargo is our pipelining and promotion tool that sits a layer above Argo CD. Um, Cube Vision is our visualization dashboard that helps present Kubernetes information, and it's powered by the information it gets from Argo CD. Um, and so these are our, um, kind of our current three approaches that we're taking to building a business around Argo. Oh, and then I'll pass to Hong to wrap up. Yeah, I think those logos, uh, there's a good one, but like uh, like uh, elephant in the room situation, like Terraform, WordPress, and Redis. So uh, I think there are a lot of strong opinion, especially I'm also looking forward to the panel discussion afterwards, after us. I think there are more like deep discussion about what is working, what we could be working. Uh, to us, I would say we are trying to more like a, doing the product play here. So we're trying to keep the open source going because there's so much the big adoption. We're trying to be the good citizens. We're trying to find a way actually shaping more, attracting more people from our side while we keep the open source very, very stable. That's our intention. So we don't necessarily agree with what Terraform happened and what press happened. But I cannot understand why they are doing that, because uh, I'm running the business. Even I was an engineer, I'm running the business. I understand that is uh, what can make the product actually sustainable, long-term lasting, is actually you need the business to be backing it in the, in the behind. So right now, I think the good example is the Linux and the Kubernetes. So we have Linux Foundation. I actually learned that we are pay, Linux Foundation is paying the Linux also millions of dollars, I'm not, if I'm not wrong. So as the, as definitely there's some money coming into that, a strong business that can fund the additional money into the project. So same thing, I think the future of the open source project and also the business model is uh, finding the right balance. I feel right now is uh, there a lot of the hate about the, the company, like uh, commercialize it. I feel in the end there will be a certain level of the mutual understanding about, hey, like it's really, if they are good cities and they're trying to make the product sustainable, I think the company will be more understandable about that. That's kind of our current exploring. I don't think we have the silver bullet to tell you, hey, just do this, you will be fine. No, I think it's still, it's still going on, so we'll see how that will be landed. And uh, I think we'll wrap up here. So one more thing uh, interesting here is uh, we actually have an Argo documentary coming on this Thursday. So it's like talking about the whole history, how the project uh, to becoming where we are right now. So there's a premier event actually in this, in the Salt Place level two, 244, uh, 254. If you guys are interested, feel free to go there. Otherwise, just like watching on the YouTube and you are getting all the information there. So I think that's about it. So feel free to ask us anything or any tough questions. I'm happy to take it. Uh, feel free to use the mic there, yeah. Go ahead. Hi, uh, my name is Zach. I'm a senior software engineer. Hey, um, so over the years, I've built a lot of little things that uh, would be helpful for more than just the company I've built them for. Um, so what does that conversation look like when you've built something great that could be profitable to convince a company like Intuit or a, a, a company that wants the money and has this thing to make it open source, give it to the community, but also allow you to spin a new company out of it and produce revenue of your own? Yeah, it's a good question. I think uh, we didn't have a challenge there. The reason is uh, before we start our company, the project has been donated to the CNCF. So that makes things easier. But uh, I think I heard other story about the cadence with temporal, and uh, I'm not sure whether there's friction, but in the end, is, uh, I, think, I think both parties will be respectful. Is, uh, both parties need to understand the license is license. It's open source Apache 2.0, yeah, you can fork it. So there's no legal thing around that. But on our side is uh, like, uh, definitely you want to maintain a good relationship because there's a lot of the maintainer still from the original company. You want to be friendly with them. And uh, normally I would say it's more like looking at their business model. Like Intuit is a financial company. They have no interest about doing the developer tools business. So that makes things very clear and easy. So, so yeah. yeah. Thank okay. you. Oh, five minutes. Okay. Hi. 
So with, uh, this is kind of a comment in the general context of what we've heard today from multiple talks, but you know, just is it possible that uh, Argo could maybe generate streams of revenue from um, support, mainly like through GitHub or Ghost, you know, like issues where people can submit, hey, I have an idea, but then like a super chat and also include, and here's like 50 bucks bounty if someone will fix it. There's probably a lot of other solutions, platforms that provide something like that. But it's just a question slash a comment that maybe uh, if you had one dollar with such a broad audience that you highlighted at the beginning of the talk, one dollar each, like per month, something like Patreon or so, or a yearly subscription, what would that do for your revenue? Versus, um, I know it's a problem with a lot of engineers. I have peers that will focus on making more complex solutions, adding more features for you know a tool trying to find a user rather than a user who's trying to find a tool to solve their problem. Maybe by starting with the people who pay for it, yeah. uh, you can also focus on new sources sure. of revenue. That's a, all over the place, yeah. but appreciate so, it. Um, I would say there's a bit of a unique situation caused by the project being under the CNCF and also the fact that it has um, other vendors, you know, that are participating in the maintenance of the project, including Intuit and, and CodeFresh. Uh, so um, I think for a CNCF project like Argo um, with multiple vendors, you have a bit of, um, you have to definitely play nicer with uh, all the other maintainers. So. Um, you get also less kind of freedom, right, on what can actually happen because you have to have consensus and agreement with other interested parties uh, on what can go in. Um, on on the other hand, though, um, our customers, like when their issues are the most important to us because they're our paying customers, and so there's no shortage of bugs and issues that are in the op open. But if you're paying us for support, we get to prioritize the, the issues affecting you more um, uh, or fight for your um, interest uh, as, a, as a paying customer and so that we can use our influence and, and, and say, hey, this is like actually an important issue for uh, the project. So that's how I, I view it. Yeah, I, I just want to add one point is uh, I, first of all, I'm not influenced the CNCF enough, but I feel the Patreon idea is actually great. So if you can hire some engineer more like, hey, maintain the open source could be their lifestyle thing. So it don't, doesn't need to be like us. We are optimized for profit. We are funded by VC. So it means we really need to represent the best interest also the VC and us. But if the CNCF or first foundation could be like collecting enough revenue, be able to actually di divert the revenue to those like lifestyle engineer can maintain, do a great job to maintain the open source, I think that could be another solution which I don't see that happening, except for Linux, except for Linux. So, go ahead. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Satish. Thanks for sharing your user story. Um, so, I'm actually pursuing Kappa, like uh, Argo certification with the CNCF. Um, so, one thing, like, um, I'm seeing a common pattern in the right now in the open source market, right? So, like, whenever somebody building an open source project, obviously, like as you said, they have like an enterprise version because I think maybe they are not able to make it sustainable for a long time. That's the reason people having like a open source product versus a cap of like 15% or 10% extra feature, which they tag it as an enterprise product. Uh, so do you uh, still think that's the way to go or like uh, it's just uh, that's how the market is right now? Because like I, I think like I'm trying to build my own product as well, and then I'm trying to keep it like 15% as an enterprise product yes. because, like, we want to stop run our own community meetups or like coming like a KubeCon or something. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, just wanted to uh, hear from you guys. Like, I, you I think? think it's still the right way to do for now, but uh, it depends on like uh, how big is the the user base you want to be. So, you want to do more, maybe only reserve 10%. You're getting 90% like open source. That means you're getting a way broader audience. Maybe that carry you on a long way because everyone know about it, give you the feedback. If you reserve a lot, maybe the initial yeah. adoption is not there. Yeah, yeah. I think still need to be balanced. To us, like Argo CD went very far away. Yeah, Basically, yeah. no one will think, hey, are you using the Argo CD single sign-on? It's like blocked by that. So we, we bring in the DAX, solve the problem. I think the majority of the SaaS solution out there is that they gated the single sign-on, charging for a certain amount of money. But Argo CD is not that situation. 
but that make your like us like harder because we really working so hard to building yeah. additional differential yeah, features. With the market. But in the end, is uh, uh, I don't know, but our feeling is a lot of the company are talking about is uh, are you SMB focus or are you enterprise focus? So then I think you really need to figure out that. So for the Argo perspective, is we feel we are the enterprise focus. Because a lot of smaller companies, they are willing to pay some money to get in SaaS solution, which is great. Not that it, uh, it's good, but uh, you're getting more revenue from the enterprise because they are more mission critical. They're getting more SLA requirement. They have compliance requirement. They are in a way, way larger scale. So that's kind of like where you get the money. But you, you're just thinking about how, how big that revenue can sustain your growth. Yeah, one last thing. So when you started in 2021, like, I think you were trying to solve your development uh, issues. That's when you started Argo. Do you guys thought that this will grow this far? No, we don't. Because uh, when we started Argo, we already, we did the initial commercialization at uh, Applatix. We got acquired, we gave up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then we basically thinking about, hey, this will be our opportunity to really contribute to the open source. Because when I was joining the KubeCon in Seattle and San Diego, like 2018, 19, and 90, I'm so great to be here. Like, I don't need to worry about like, uh, convincing the customer. Yeah. I was at the Intuit booth, I think. The people asked me, why you are here? I said, I just want you to love my open source product. That's kind of like the pure joy. I'm exhausted every day, but it's a pure joy. But right now, I need to say, hey, how many clusters are you using? Like, are you thinking about this uh, pain point? Like, will you consider using us? So you're thinking, and then the view, vision got changed, basically. It's changed, but still, it's, it's a life. Like, you, you are doing the business here. Thank you. All right, thank you. We'll we be around. Feel free to find out. Thank you.